we are presenting this information at all the campuses and at the conference center, each campus twice at the conference center once, because it is important information. We wanna make sure that everybody has the opportunity to attend. Um, at the end, we finish, I think June 30th is our last gig. We will pack up our band and we will uh, go back to our offices but then what we're going to do, we're videotaping today's session. We will um, make that available to the college. And then we are also going to create um, an FAQ sheet to accompany the video. And we will also create just a, a one front back uh, doc page document that gives a lot of the information just in terms of what is on time and moment, what is it going to look like, how will it affect us in the implementation plan. So anyway, all of that will be sent out to the college after we complete our last presentation on the 30th. So, okay. So, um, the reason the three of us are going around to visit with everyone <coughs> regarding on-time enrollment is, we will venture to say that our three areas are going to be the most affected by on-time enrollment. So we wanted to ensure that we were able to share the information with you all. So on that note, I am Eileen Kenny. I am Assistant Vice President for Enrollment Management. So I have areas such as um, enrollment services, financial aid, Tulsa Achieves, college registrar, um, admission prospective student services. Those areas fall under my umbrella. I'm Jocelyn Whitney. I'm representing the academic affairs, specifically academic divisions, faculty, classroom division, office practices. Um, I'm the communications division. Um, we'll just go ahead and be grand free for everywhere. <laughs> A little arts and communications. And I'm Molly Farley. I am the uh, director of academic advising for, for everywhere as well. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we think that, that these are probably the three primary areas that will be affected by on-time enrollment. Not that all of you won't somehow have you know, a hand in this or um, you need to know about it, all of that. But again, it's, it's kind of, this is, I think we will um, see that the greatest effects in our area. Okay, so a little bit of history. Last fall, the college brought together a really nice group from across the college. We had faculty, staff, administration came together to talk about on-time enrollment because it's something, if you've been at TCC for a while, you've heard this talked about. And, uh, and so we, we came together then to talk about it in depth and determine can we do it, is the time right, and what does it look like? So that group was chaired by Pat Green at our Northeast campus. And, and they came up with some recommendations. And they presented those recommendations to the college leadership. They were accepted. And we are going live with on-time enrollment this fall. So this is a big culture shift for TCC. But I think it's a really important one. Because part of what this group did is they, they looked at our data. And our data show that students are twice as likely to fail or withdraw from a class if they are not enrolled in time to attend that first class, class session. So the underlying um, premise of all of this is that what can we do to improve our student success? And this is one step along that way of improving student success, ensuring that students are enrolled in time so that they can attend the first class session. Okay, so it begins this fall. So when do classes start? August 22nd. Okay, and we're going to talk about that. So this goes into effect uh, right then. So starting the fall semester, student success and retention are the underlying factors that are supporting this entire uh, program for on-time enrollment. And really, that's what it boils down to, just that students need to be enrolled in the class before the first class session. It's as easy as that. Okay, so as I mentioned, we have talked about on-time enrollment for several years. We've looked at what other institutions have done when they have implemented on-time enrollment. 
how it's affected them. So, why do it now? Why implement on-time enrollment? What are the top three reasons to implement on-time enrollment? This is audience participation. <laughs> Success, retention. Success, student success. Beautiful. Is there another reason? And that leads to student success. <laughs> <laughs> and is there a third reason? My student success. Exactly. So again, it just helps drive the point home that um, that that is that is why we're doing this. Uh, we looked at data. And we know that this will work. <clears throat> okay, so what does this look like? What does work, what does on-time enrollment look like for TCC? I just quizzed you. You know that classes start Monday, fall classes, for 16 week, this is kind of what we're talking about. Monday, August 22nd. So on Sunday at 11.59 p.m., we have programmed Banner to shut down web registration. So, you know, most of our students enroll online. They enroll themselves online. But we've programmed it to stop web registration at 11.59. However, if a student presents to campus to enroll, and the class has not yet started, he or she will be allowed to enroll in that class. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more in depth. Okay? So, now what does this mean for our online students? There was a lot of discussion about this. Online class is pretty much open at the crack of dawn Monday morning. That's their start time. They don't really have a first class session. So, if an online student is not enrolled, by 11.59 on Sunday evening, then uh, those students will need to present in person and we will try and find them a different option that has that it was maybe a 14 week option or some, some other option that would suit their schedule. If it has to be an online class, we'll look and see is there a 14 week option available for them. So, and we'll talk about what that process looks like, helping find alternatives, and helping the students support through that process. <clears throat> there will be very few exceptions granted to this process. They will be few and far between, and they must meet very specific criteria. And we will talk about what those criteria are, and how those exceptions are granted, what that process entails. Okay, the one thing I didn't say is kind of my, my spiel, um, if you have questions, go ahead and kind of jot them down or just make sure. And I think if we save them to the end, we'll, I think we're going to cover the majority of what you all are wanting to know. But at the end of this session, we should have plenty of time for a question and answer. So I, I forgot to, to give that in the opening remarks. We also have no cards. If there's something that you think of afterwards that you're saying, oh, I really want to be sure that this gets into the FAQs, or I didn't get a chance to ask this, fill out one of the little blank index cards up here and leave it with us. Thank you. Okay, okay. so exceptions. Um, there's going to be very few exceptions. Um, it, our first kind of response to students that want to enroll in a class that has already started will be, let us see what kind of other options we can work out for you. Let's try to find a class that hasn't started. Let's find another section of the same class. Let's find a different class that will still fit that humanities requirement you need or whatever requirement you need. So there's, there's going to be very few that are um, deemed appropriate for an exception. There's really five reasons. Um, the first is if the student meets criteria to enroll in excessive hours. So if they, they have that really high GPA and they could enroll um, in an overload class, then they, that could be considered an exception. Um, if the class requires instructor permission prior to enrollment, so for example, a music class, like a private lesson music class, that the student needs permission to get enrolled, um, and they haven't gotten that permission yet, that could be considered an exception. Um, special populations or cohort courses, um, so if there's a, a students that are moving through as a cohort and something happens and they're not able to get enrolled, that could be considered an exception. 
Um, the instructor says the student should enroll in a different course. So say the student's in reading two, but they really should be in college level courses. Um, they send them to advisement and we would do an exception for that. Um, or if the student was dropped due to TCC or human error. So um, if there's some sort of error on our part, then that would, that would constitute an exception. Um, but like I said, we, we're, we're thinking there'll be very few of these and we have lots of um, discussion points before we get to the exception point. Um, the process is mainly going to be they're going to start in academic advising um, and we're going to go through kind of our, our discussion with them and then if we think they meet the um, qualifications for one of those exceptions, we will then fill out the exception form for them. It's going to be an online form and it's going to be through Process Maker. Um, some of you that have already went through the performance review process might have seen Process Maker, but um, you, you fill it out, you send it, and then it goes to the appropriate division or department. So they will go to the division offices um, or schools or whatever we're going to call them um, in a couple of days. The division will make a decision. That turnaround is going to be 24 hours. So that decision will be made within 24 hours, and then the student will be notified via email. Um, they'll be told that when they start the process in the advising office. So they'll be notified via email and then they will be required to enroll in the course. Um, and they'll be required to enroll in it before the next class period starts. So that exception approval will be void once the second class period starts. Um, the form must be used. Um, so there's not going to be students that are allowed to go to the division and beg and plead to get in and, and get approved to get into a class. They have to go through that exception process. We're trying to make it just a um, you know, one process for everyone. Um, and then, like I said, there, we're expecting there to be very few, but this fall there might be more than expected. Um, we're prepared to kind of field those exceptions and um, try to find other options for the students. Absolutely, and just following up a little bit on those exceptions. Again, this is a new process. So um, we, the, the committee that, that met in the fall outlined what they thought would be the, the most appropriate exceptions. And I want to add that just because a student meets one of this, these criteria doesn't mean an, an exception will be automatic. So if they, just, they have to meet this criteria to be accepted or to be considered for an exception. So, and then I want to let everyone know that again, since it is a new process, we will keep evaluating this. At the end of the term, we'll run an audit report to look at those exceptions and see, were the students successful? Those who were granted exceptions, were they successful? Were the exceptions used appropriately? And we will continue to refine that as needed. It could be that everything is perfect, we got it right the first time, and wonderful. Or it could be that we need to read that. I know this will surprise you. <laughs> Or it could be that we, that we need to refine and, and, and look at it again. Okay. How will faculty be impacted by this? Um, number one, it's going to change a little bit how we want the first day of class handle. Um, in the past, uh, the students would come and you you would know you would check your roster and you might come up with several students who hadn't enrolled yet and you might just tell them oh, okay be sure you you know get you know get around to enrollment services you know sometime this week to do this we're changing this a little bit we've been communicating this long enough what we want to have happen on that first day of class if the student did not realize that they've been dropped for non-payment. And we'll discuss a little bit longer. We're taking some additional steps this year to ensure that they are notified uh, that they have been dropped. But we do know that sometimes, sometimes there are system glitches and the student will have been dropped without, without realizing it. So what we want to try, you know, until we get this new culture in place to really work with those students so if a student presents in your class the first night and there is seating space available, please allow them to sit in that first night of class <coughs> without guaranteeing them anything. But they must please tell them, you are not on my rolls. I am not sure whether or not we'll be able to continue in this section of this class 
you must go to advisement immediately after class and fill out an exception form. Then, please, email your dean, associate dean, department chair, so that we know that student attended class the first day. So that when they do apply for that appeal to get in for that exception, we will have the information we need to help make that decision, okay? Or if we need to shift them to another class, we at least know they attended the first day so that we can get them into another section, uh, more like as a drop add on that. So please do that. One other thing I will urge, we're really, like we said, trying to change the culture. And the culture for a long time has been, it's not too late to enroll, and so, Many faculty, not all, and I dare say no one in this room because I don't think the, uh, uh, I'm preaching to the choir. Let's make that first class period really important for them to attend by spending more than 15 minutes reviewing the syllabus and then saying, okay, go get your books. Let's really start, start the class on the first night. And I know it has been a vicious cycle because you say, well, but students can enroll until, you know, halfway through the second week. Why would I give them all this content at the beginning? Again, we need to do a number of things to try to change this culture. And that's a very important way that the faculty can help us to do that. Like uh, Eileen said, or Molly said, I don't remember which, please do not send the student to the division office. We are not the ones who initiate these forms. These forms will be coming. We don't want the students ping-ponging back and forth physically between these once they've seen advisement. They will know to go on their way, to go to their next class, whatever it is, and wait for that email response. Not to just sit there in advisement waiting because we'll have to, again, the division office will look at it after advisement has looked at it. We'll make sure that we have been notified by the faculty member. We'll look to really make sure that it meets these before we approve or disapprove. So we don't want students just sitting in the division offices. Thank you. Okay, so student affairs. How will on-time enrollment impact student affairs? There's two main offices that it will impact. It'll be enrollment services and academic advising. So enrollment services after that online enrollment cutoff they will be enrolling students who, who appear in person before the class starts. Um, if they appear, if the student appears um, after the class has started, they will then give them some other options. They'll talk about um, other sections that they could enroll in, how to find another class that hasn't started. If the student is really confused and really doesn't know what to enroll in or how to, how to do that process, they will then be directed to academic advising or if the student qualifies for an exception. They'll be directed to academic advising. We will either complete the exception form to request the exception for the, for the student, or we will assist them in finding other options. Um, and then really academic advising will be the place where we, and enrollment services will be the place where we say, I'm sorry, that class has already started. You cannot enroll in that class. Let's work on some other options for you. Uh, so we will be saying no with the caveat of helping them find other options. Um, so it's, it's really important that we kind of all work together to help the students find other options for classes, other sections, um, other, other classes that might meet the same, um, the same course requirement. Um, but really, if they act confused, send them the advising, we're prepared to walk them through those options and get them in something that will work towards their degree. One of the most frequently asked questions that we've been getting in the, during these sessions follows on this. Um, am I any enrollment services people? Okay. So here's the, is there a hard and fast cutoff as to how, how, if they can get, you know, if, if it's, so if it's, let's say a class starts at 9.30 and a student presents at 8.30. Can they go ahead and enroll? The answer is probably yes. There's not, there's, we, we're not creating a hard and fast rule at this point. So what we're saying to staff is it really is some level of professional judgment. Can that student visit with somebody in enrollment services 
and within the, a reasonable time frame, get enrolled for that class and get to the class. I would say within the hour is probably doable. If a class starts at 9.30 and a student shows up at 9.17 and there are five people in line, and they're getting really antsy, and it's at Southeast Campus and the class is in the Performing Arts Building, probably not gonna work because I doubt that transaction can happen at that point where the student can get enrolled get to that building and be prepared to get to that class. So it, this is gonna make some people very nervous. Because they're, the, it, and so we will work with staff and we're gonna do some role play and scenarios and work so that everybody to try and increase the comfort level so that they have a better feel for when to say, oh gosh, I am so sorry. Let's see if we can find a different option for you rather than, okay, here, we'll put on that permit, you go ahead and get enrolled, get to class. Good luck, go. Okay, so but that's come up in every session that we have, that we have covered. Are we already on this slide? Yes, we are. Wow, I'm so long. <laughs> so, okay, as I have said, I think for the fifth time now, this is a really big change for TCC. And so, understanding that, we cannot communicate this enough. Am I standing just right in front of this PowerPoint slide? Sorry. We cannot communicate this enough to our students and to our faculty and staff. So, last, um, in, in March, it was for the <coughs> March, we knew this was coming. So, we created an email that we sent to all students who were currently enrolled in the spring, all students who had been enrolled in the fall, and anyone who had applied for summer, who may have already been, up, been able to apply for fall. We tried to cast the net far and wide. And the, the gist of the email was, big changes are coming. Please be aware, when you're enrolling, you must be enrolled. You know, it was a clear, concise message. So we sent that off to several thousand students. And we got some spicy responses back. <laughs> a little fiery. And those responses came to me. And so, uh, but, so here, here was a lesson learned. When we sent that communication, we just said, this is changing, please be aware. What we didn't add into that communication was the why. So that was part of my job, to follow up with the, with the students who had spicy responses wanting to know why, what is going on? I don't like this change, it affects me. So in my response back to the students, I explained and I, I gave them our justification and I, I gave them our data, the support that they found that students were twice as likely to fail or withdraw from a class if they were not enrolled for the first, if they were not in time, enrolled in time to attend the first day of class. And I said, and TCC is making all sorts of changes to aid and support student success. And it was interesting because when I, sent, when I would send those responses, the vast majority would email back with a, oh, okay, good to know, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> the only one was, was still very persistent that this, this was an unfair change. So, but anyway, so what that said to me was, there was nothing magic about my words, but what it said to me was, communicating the why is so important with this change, that this is not a random change, that we did a lot of background research, and that this change is rooted in data, and that it is all about student success. So, so from this point forward, that's, that message will be conveyed to our students. Okay, so that email went out. More emails are going out. We're getting ready to seriously ramp this up, July and August. On the website, it, there's actually a page on on-time enrollment. We put it on the schedule, changes, big change, you must be enrolled. I keep sitting right in front of it, I am so sorry. Um, big changes are coming. Make sure you are enrolled. 
Um, we have an electronic newsletter that we send to students. For the past two months, on-time enrollment has been one of the feature topics. We will continue that. We interviewed a student in the last one so that a student could give her perspective of on-time enrollment, what, what she thought of it. Was it a good thing? And we did not coach her at all. And, and she, I mean, it was, it was, a, it was a really cool um, exchange between Dr. Clayton and this student. Campus visuals. So this is stale. You're, you see these on the campuses now. These are getting ready to change. We are so far past and roll early. <laughs> 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 Not relevant anymore. So Carrie Culp and her team are creating a new campaign that will start in July. It's going to be much more direct. We were trying to do the soft approach. <laughs> I don't think we can be so soft anymore. We, we need to be positive about it. This is a change for the good, but it needs to be more direct. So, one of the things that has become very clear also is that you all want the information as well. Libraries want visuals. Facet Center wants visuals. Academic Advising <coughs> wants visuals. All of the student affairs want something that they can hand to students. So we will do that. If divisions want visuals, we'll get you visuals to, to something that you can hand to students. Um, Frontline staff members, get ready, because we're going to start wearing buttons <laughs> that, um, that, that indicate to students you know, the change that is coming. So we're going to wear suspenders. So I joke, but it, the, the communication is key to this. We understand that. And so uh, starting in July, it is greatly ramped up to our students and will continue to be. They're covering it in NSO. We are covering it in the parent orientations that are coming up. So at every opportunity, we are driving this point home. And we've had people ask, well, should we go ahead and, meaning you, the audience, do you want us to go ahead and start talking about this? By all means, yes. Mm -hmm. If you have to put on a sandwich board and go up and down Boston, <laughs> you'll <don't have> <laughs> At any, at any chance you have to, when you interact with students, share this information with them. Uh -huh. Here's the catch. All right. um, division offices and most of the enrollment services and advisement areas know now that we have been um, slightly adjusting our cancellation processes for the last couple of years. Our final class cancellation, we used to wait sometimes until the first day of class to make final cancellations. Sometimes it would be two weeks ahead of time. It just varied greatly from campus to campus or division to division. With the centralization of divisions into one division across the entire college and with real careful section management, we have staggered days leading up to a final class cancellation day, again, this applies to those classes that meet, that begin the 22nd, whether they're eight week, four week, 16 week, anything that starts the 22nd, that we will be making those final cancellation decisions Thursday following convocation. This is going to be a rapid turnaround. So all of the divisions we're really asking, begging. We need the ADs, the department chairs, the faculty chairs to work together to make those decisions very late Wednesday or very early Thursday. And so that the uh, administrative assistants in the division offices can start notifying <coughs> students at that moment so that the students will have the remainder of the day Thursday, all day Friday to come in in person, and then we'll still have the weekend that they could go online to take a look at this. This is really critical. We, we started ramping up this kind of consistent process across the board last year, and we're still working on this. It will help tremendously because the question has come up, well, but what, what if you, you know, cancel all of the open sections? This is what really helps. It's been difficult in the past couple of years because we have to coordinate with four different division offices to do when we, when we cancel one class. We'll have one or two people pretty much in the same location 
doing all of this. So all of freshman composition, one people along with, Mer with me will be making those decisions for the entire college so we can look and make sure that students have reasonable offering still. We do not want to cancel the last section open when we do that. And I know this isn't on time enrollment, but it impacts it so directly because that's probably one of the number one reasons that students will get caught, caught up kind of late last minute if they hadn't checked that. One other thing that is changing with this, which is very good, um, our current process is to try to call all students enroll first, but we know how many students have accurate phone numbers on the system? Maybe, <laughs> maybe on a good day, or their neighbors not taking messages for them anymore like they had been. So we e currently we will email their my TCC email address. Okay, what's the catch there? They're not checking it. Class hasn't started yet. I don't even check it during the regular semester. Why would I check before class has started? So what we are, we have worked with, with Eileen, we've worked with IT, and we're actually, the division offices are going to have access to the student's home email address, not to tell them your class has been canceled, but to give them a very carefully crafted message, which we will communicate out, that there is a very important message from Tulsa Community College in your MyTCC email, open and read this immediately. We, it, it, is, it gets into FERPA confusion if we send that email that your class has been canceled directly to their home email, but we can't alert them, basically ping them saying, wake up, something's going on, you need to check this email over here. So that's, that should be very, very helpful. We're also, in the past, we send someone in enrollment services on our own campus a notice that we canceled this class. So that within the next couple of days, uh, somebody in enrollment services could go in and drop the students from that class. Sometimes that worked really well, sometimes it didn't work so well, and halfway through the semester you realize there's still a student stuck in that class that's been canceled. So we have worked and Eileen has, um, is getting together the you know, little dream team, the star chamber, there at the end of the day on Thursday that all of those communications about class cancellations will go to that one group who will not be frontline people working at the front desk. They'll be behind the scenes and they'll be able to go in and just do those mass drops on all those students. So then hopefully then, perhaps that student who really hasn't been paying attention anywhere, maybe on Sunday afternoon at about seven o'clock when they wake up, <laughs> and say, oh, I think classes might be starting sometime soon. <laughs> they just might try to pull up their schedule on their phone and realize, oh, wait a minute, something's changed. Maybe I need to take a look at something else. That's what we're, we're really hoping to do because we, 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 we are learning a little bit of student behavior of what they do. Okay. So that's how, that's how that works. Very similarly, okay, we talked about this a little while ago. These are the ones that we're a lot more likely to, to try to make some of those concessions, again, if they are in attendance on that first day of class. If someone shows up on the second day of class, they're not on your roster, you've never seen them before, that is one of those, I'm so sorry, you know, this is, you know, you will, you will need to choose another, you know, alternative, you know, faculty member. That's really, that really is too late for the student to do it. They missed that first day of class in addition to it, and then it will take some additional advising for them to figure out what to do at this point. Okay. Similarly with the DMP, um, the, the, the mass drop is, does anybody know what it is? In July, it's going to be July 15th. So we, we will turn on, we know what tuition is going to be now, so starting July 1st, they will have from the 1st until the 15th to go in and make sure that they have either set up their payment plan, they have third party pay on record, financial aid is in order, however it is that they're going to pay for their classes, they have from the 1st until the 15th to do that. 
On the 15th, the mass drop will occur. Just one. Exactly. And then after that point, the shopping cart kicks in so that they have 60 minutes after choosing their classes to go through the payment process. So similarly, um, they, the, the, the communication is sent to the student's TCC email. And as we all know, they're not checking, I'm not in class, why do I check my email? So anyway, very similarly, we're going to send them a ping, basically, to their personal email saying, please check your, your TCC email. Important information is there. So we really are trying to cover our bases and, and ensure that students are as prepared for this as, as we can help them be. Okay, so in summary, let's just go over this one more time so that we're all on the same page. Okay, classes start August 22nd. On Sunday the 21st at 11.59, we will shut off web registration. Students may still enroll in class as long as that class has not yet met. They do that in person. Our, our uh, students were truly online, let's say they're sitting in Nebraska and taking classes at TCC, our online advisor will help with that process. Exceptions may be granted, but they will be very few and far between. It is our goal that we can help guide students to another option that has not yet started. And um, and so here's another question that has been raised. This, this one's a little bit stickier. Why are we just rewarding students if they're coming in late and, and we're saying, okay, we have these 14 week sessions set up for you or we'll, we'll let you do this. We have to be able to provide some options for students. I really do think that after about one academic year, two semesters of going through this process, students will have a much better understanding and behaviors will be modified so that this just becomes less and less and less an issue. So they know that I must be involved. So I think it will take one academic year for this to become the norm, and then it will become the norm. So another question that we're asked frequently is, is this going to affect enrollment? We're starting, we're saying, oh, sorry, classes have started, and there's no, you know, what if the student doesn't have an option? The institutions that we have researched that did implement on-time enrollment did see a, a small, very temporary dip in enrollment. <coughs> very small, very temporary, because we will try and find other options. We are prepared for that. If it happens, because if you look at the long game, Look at the retention rates. Look at the completion rates. It will start to balance out if there is one. I am confident that with our spectacular advising team, our wonderful faculty, and departments, divisions, schools, whatever we're going to call Kingdom. them. <laughs> Enrollment services, I am confident we can get this, we will make this work, and we will be successful. Um, it's going to be hectic that first week. I mean, there should be, it, the first week of school is always hectic, and this will this will this will be hectic. But I, I, I am confident that we will make this work. So, and again, when we keep in mind the, the student success, it just all falls into place. We'll link to that, Kels. We had one, one question we had come up, which was really pretty significant, um, because I know there are many of the frontline administrative assistants in the division offices who are quite accustomed to um, feeling that buffet of that student truly, you know, pleading, crying, you know, but, 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 but. And they said, what if the student is just that, that angry? And we said, you know, hey, everyone knows if it's a security issue, call the campus police. But I said, what we've got to realize is that students are angry right now. We have angry students right now all the time. We are actually doing this so that that angry student in the first week, we can help provide alternatives where we won't see them back halfway through the semester when they're failing the class, when they're withdrawing from the class, and they are even angrier because there's no turning back at that point. Their semester it has been kind of shot already because 
we didn't, and they didn't take that time at the beginning of the semester to really get it straightened out to be successful. That's what I'm trying to, we are still going to see those same students. We're going to try to remedy it, that frustration and all of that earlier to help them succeed. So that's a really, I think, a good approach to take with those students as well when we're talking about that student success, all of this likelihood that say, let's get this medicine now and get it taken care of now so that we don't have this issue, these issues, which we know historically students have later in the semester. 